India has recently used S-400 during operational Sindur to a great success in shooting down Pakistani aircrafts and missiles, thus achieving a longest kill in air defence history, shooting down an AWACS at over 300 kilometers. Let's examine if India were to get the latest Russian next generation S-500 system, which is capable of intercepting ballistic missiles at a range of up to 600 kilometers and airborne targets up to 400 kilometers. So tonight on Defense Dynamics, we break down the evolution from S-400 to S-500 and what it means for India's air and missile defense shield. What can change in real terms vis-a-vis -vis Pakistan and China? The S-400 Triumph is already one of the world's most advanced long-range air defense systems. India's acquisition of five regiments dramatically strengthened its ability to counter stealth aircraft, cruise missiles and ballistic threats. But Russia's S-500 Promete represents the next generational leap, not just an air defense system, but a hybrid air and space defense shield. The S-400 continues to serve as the backbone of integrated air defense network in Russia, China, Turkey and now India. Its capabilities make it one of the most versatile long-range air defense systems in the world. The system can engage aircraft and UAVs at a distance of up to 380 kilometers and it is capable of tracking and targeting ballistic missiles at altitudes reaching 60 kilometers. It employs four different missile families, including the long-range 40N6, giving it flexibility across threat profiles. The S-400 can simultaneously track 300 targets and engage 36 of them at the same time providing a dense and layered defensive umbrella. For India, the induction of the S-400 has filled critical gaps in countering Pakistan's long-range strike capabilities as well as China's expanding air power presence across the Tibetan plateau. It represents a major technological leap in strengthening India's ability to defend its airspace against a wide spectrum of threats. To understand what is S-500 and its capabilities, let's try and recap what S-400 is capable of with the help of video wall and the graphics. Here you can see an S-400 launcher with graphical representation of aerial and ground distance, both of them in kilometers, maximum on ground being 400 and up in the air in altitude is 30 kilometers. So it means that once the missile is fired by S-400, it can strike at the longest distance of 400 kilometers and at an altitude of 30 kilometers. So keep this in mind. And when we talk of S-500, you will get to know what major difference these two systems bring in into the strategic air defense. So now let's get go over to S-500. So this is S-500 and you see a similar graphic representation, but just focus on the distance, both the aerial above in altitude and the ground distance. While the altitude distance goes up from 30 kilometers to 200 kilometers, the ground distance stretches from 400 to 600 kilometers, which goes to say that S-500 can strike a target at 600 kilometers at an altitude of 200 kilometers above the Earth's surface. And on to my left side are the missiles that are likely to be fired by S-400 as well as S-500. So these are common missiles. And in addition to this, there can be another missile which is not declassified, which will be fired from S-500 to achieve this magical range of 600 kilometers and 200 kilometers up in the near space. So let's try and understand what are the capabilities of S-500. 500 with the help of uh, this video wall and uh, the pointers, the first pointer being 600 kilometers ballistic intercept, 200 kilometers altitude, which means 
that it can intercept a ballistic missile at a range of 600 kilometers on the ground and when you move up it can target it up at 200 kilometers above the surface level so that is the capability that this uh, particular weapon system would have secondly it will be capable of uh, engaging aerodynamic targets that means the aircrafts and the uavs at a distance of 400 kilometers then uh, it has got another very unique capability and that unique capability is that it can target hypersonic vehicles flying at Mark 5, Mark 5 being uh, five times the speed of sound. So that is another very unique capability. In fact, one of the few air defense systems in the world that can target hypersonic missiles. And lastly, uh, as of now, as we uh, speak, uh, uh, this particular target, uh, this particular weapon system has a capability of uh, uh, targeting targets up to 200 kilometers in altitude which is the edge of the space and it is uh, part of strategic air defense of the Russian armed forces uh, as it mentions it functions as part of Russia's strategic missile defense layer so this is a highly capable and a very potent air defense system that world has yet seen if India evaluates and eventually opts for S-500 system the implications would be far-reaching. To begin with, India's layered missile defense architecture would strengthen dramatically. The S-400 already provides an advanced long-range air defense capability, but the S-500 adds a high-altitude exo-atmospheric intercept layer. Together, these systems would create the most comprehensive missile shield India has ever fielded sitting alongside indigenous program and the upcoming XR SAM. A second major impact would be on India's ability to counter the rapidly evolving missile arsenal of Pakistan and China. Pakistan's Ababil MIRV capable missile and the expanding Babur cruise missile family pose complex future threats. China, meanwhile, is deploying hypersonic glide vehicles and modern DF series ballistic missiles. The S-500 is engineered precisely for these advanced, high-speed maneuvering targets, giving India an important technological edge. Finally, the deployment of S-500 would significantly enhance the protection of India's highest value strategic zones. These would include National Capital Region, the Mumbai Industrial and Financial Corridor, key strategic air bases, and critical nuclear command and control nodes. For India, the system would not just be another weapon purchase, but a major leap in building a resilient national air and missile defense posture. The S-500 also comes with several constraints India would need to consider. Production remains limited, but Russian forces receiving priority, meaning export clearances, is unlikely until Moscow completes full domestic induction. Even once available, systems' high cost and complexities of integrating it with India's existing air defense architecture will require careful evaluation. At the same time, India's own ballistic missile defense program is progressing rapidly, raising important questions about balancing foreign acquisition with indigenous capability development. India already operates one of the world's most capable air defense umbrellas with S-400. The S-500, if eventually acquired, would take India into the elite league of nations capable of air and space defense. In other words, the evolution from S-400 to S-500 would mean two generations of technology that could shape the future of India's strategic shape.